So here we have a question about probability. Uh, let's give it a read through and then we'll talk about how to deal with this diagram. The probability tree diagram gives information about the probability a student is male or female, a student has passed or failed their final exam. Complete the probability tree diagram. So the key thing that you need to know to, to, to complete this diagram is that these branches, so uh, this branch and this branch, include everything, which means they add up to one. Um, now when I say they add up to one, you might be thinking of it totally differently, but if there is a three-tenths probability that uh, this certain student is male, then there is a seven-tenths probability, seven and ten, that they're female, because that's like the rest of the ten. Three out of the ten were male, and seven out of the ten were female. I'm saying like three out of ten, seven out of ten, there aren't necessarily ten students, but um, if three-tenths is the probability of male, then the rest of the probability is that it's female. Uh, and we can do the same to all these other branches. So if there is a four in five chance they've passed, then the other one in five is the probability they've failed. And again, if there's a four in five chance that the female passed, then there is a one in five chance that they failed. So um, there's part A, there's a probability tree. Fairly straightforward if you know that those branches have to add up to the whole thing. Um, quick side note, uh, this probability tree could have been given as decimals. Let's say this had been 0 0.3, then this would have been 0.7, because again, it's the rest. Um, if this had been 0.8, then this would be 0.2, because it's the rest. Um, so that's that. Part B, this is, the, this, is the, this is the tougher part. Work out the probability a student chosen at random is a male who passed the exam. Now, I've obviously circled male, and I've, and I've pointed to the fact that they passed, because this, this arrow here indicates the probability we're looking at because these are the males who have passed. The fact that these people passed is irrelevant because they were female, so they're not counted. We're looking at the male who passed. Now, the next key fact is that um, to work out the probability that two things happen, one after the other, so the probability that they are male is three-tenths, probability that they passed is four-fifths, and the probability that both things happen, one after the other, like they have to for us to get to this stage, you multiply the probabilities together. Now that in itself is quite tricky because we have to do three tenths multiplied by four fifths. Now you may know how to multiply fractions together. Um, this is, it, it is doable. You can multiply these fractions together. Um, to multiply fractions, you multiply the top two numbers and you multiply the bottom two numbers. So if we do three times four, you get 12. And if we do 10 times five, you get 50. That is it. That, that is the probability that it's a male who passed. You just times the top two numbers of your fraction and you times the bottom two numbers of your fraction. Uh, you may have a scientific calculator in the exam. You may have one in front of you. Um, and if you do, the scientific calculator lets you type in those fractions. So you can just type in your calculator 3 tenths times 4 fifths. Um, we are just going to put in a fraction 12 fiftieths um, and that is the answer. Now, if you did put it into your calculator, you might not get 12 fifths, you might get instead um, perhaps 6 20 fifths. Um, these are equivalent fractions, um, it's just that the blue one is simplified. Um, but this question didn't ask us to simplify, so I'm not going to simplify it. I'm going to leave it like 12 fiftieths, which is the top two numbers times and the bottom two numbers times, because if you need two events to happen, one after the other, you multiply the probabilities together. Uh, quick example, um, one more quick example before I um, move on to the next question. Um, if I wanted the probability that I flip a coin and it's a heads, well that's a probability of a half. If I want to flip it again and I want the probability that it's another heads, then the total probability that those two things happen are each of the probabilities times together. Um, if I wanted the probability that I flip a head on a dice, uh, flip a head on a coin and then roll a six on a dice, then this would be the probability. You just times the fractions together if you want two events to happen one after the other. You times the probability of each event happening by itself. Um, right, okay, uh, that's that question. Probability, probability tree diagrams. Hope that's helped. Um, on to the next question. Thank you.